Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget while you're here, subscribe, like, and share our content with your network. Okay, so we've seen them running up and down the streets. We see them everywhere. We often wonder, who do you belong to? No, we're not talking about those random little kids in your neighborhood, but we're talking about our fur babies. We do see them everywhere. And sometimes they're lost and need to be found. Other times they've been turned out literally into the street in hopes that somebody else will take care of them. So what happens to them that do? Let me introduce you all to somebody who has an animal rescue who's going to talk to us all about it. Her name is Yvette Acosta. Hi, Yvette. <laughs> How are you, girl? Thanks so much for joining me today. No, thank you. I appreciate your time because this is important. We do see so many pets out in the streets wandering around. They look lost. They look like they need a home or some of them look like they actually had a home, but they're out there in the streets. Tell us a little bit about what you do at Love for Pups. So most important thing is microchip your dogs. Um, that's one of the most important things. A lot of the dogs found actually don't have a microchip. Um, if they don't have a way of contacting you, no way of getting home. Sometimes you don't know if they're stolen, picked up. You know, it's important mm -hmm. to um, always get a microchip on your on your pets, um, even cats. You know, there's a lot of cats that like to go outside. Um, so always microchip them first and foremost. Mm -hmm. um, if you do ever find a dog. Please, um, you know, report it to your local shelter. You know, most of the time you can go online and report a lost dog. Um, that way, if an owner is looking for them, then, you know, they will be able to contact you. Right. Because um, that's a big thing. You can't ever find your pets. But you guys actually have an animal rescue. Is that right? Um, well, I guess my house is the animal <laughs> rescue. And the most important thing is fostering. Um, especially if you find a pet, just, you know, be prepared to hold on to it. For a day really? or two um mm -hmm. if you're not able to hold on to it you know always call animal control and let them know where the dog is but most of the time you know at shelters are so packed it's important that we find fosters and that's mm -hmm. usually what i do mm -hmm. so you you're so you have an animal rescue but you do look more for fosters so you'll find an animal or an animal is turned into you all and then you all what instantly try to find a foster or how does that work? Um, yes. So I am trying to get my 501C. Um, but there's a lot of rescuers here in El Paso and rescuers that work together. Um, you know, it's it's the 501C helps you, you know, um, do everything um, legally and make sure you follow the process. As rescuers kind of help with rescuers by fostering them. We'll even sponsor spay, neuters. Um, we all work together, though. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty good um, network that we all work together. That's um, really so we neat. definitely so if, for instance if you find a dog or there's a dog in need or it needs to be rehomed or something happens um, we do get a lot of elderly cases where either they're put into a home or the owner passes away and you have these dogs you know have nowhere to go um, yeah. if a rescue actually doesn't have the space you know then rescuers will step in as well and take them in and work with an actual rescue to get them adopted or fixed um there's a lot of rescuers that aren't, you know, 501C, but they still take them in, get them fixed, you know, find them great homes. So we all kind of try to do our best in our own ways. That's just amazing. If it, how did you get started with this? I mean, because did you literally wake up one day and go, today I'm going to rescue all the dogs on the street? How did you get started? <laughs> well, you know, in El Paso, when you grew up, dogs didn't belong inside, you know, dogs were outside. Um, I remember my grandmother having a pot and you just threw all the leftovers in there and that's what the dog ate. Um, so dogs were never really family. So I really didn't grow up, you know, with this love for dogs until I actually started working at a veterinarian's office uh, for almost six to seven years. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I kind of fell into more of the compassion against dogs. Um, I've had dogs before and they were inside and kind of learning it, but I really didn't learn about dogs. So I worked for the vet and realized the passion and how much need there is and just, you know, so much that is needed out there for, you know, stray dogs, cats. 
That's just amazing. And so there you got started. And you said earlier that you guess your house is the rescue. Is that where <laughs> you bring all these little fur babies to your house? Yes. The good part is they all get along. Um, so they come in and out, in and out. Um, but you do fall in love with some. So, you know, I do have some that are my own and some that are fosters. Oh my some goodness. that have been adopted. Mm -hmm. um, but you just come across them and, if, you know, they're nice and they kind of go in your pack and you just kind of let them come in until, you know, you get them adopted and it works, find their owners. Yeah. Do, now, do you take in all animals or is it just dogs only? And are there specific dogs that you take in or do you just, you know, whatever's out there, you're, you're taking it in? Um, it really depends. Um, I don't do cats. I really should have because, you know, I've, I've learned that cats, you just need a litter box as employees and they're on their own. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't do cats and I've had a stray come around. And so I've kind of been getting, you know, that little lovey filled with the cats. Um, but it's mostly dogs, mm -hmm. um, mostly small dogs right now, or just, you know, um, I do have larger dogs that are kind of, you know, picky, right. but they love the small, gentle dogs. Um, I try to take it, you know, it, the thing is, is with the large dog, you can't just squeeze them in the corner or in a bathroom, you know, it's, mm -hmm. if a little dog comes around, you're kind of like, Oh, I can squeeze that in my rush to wake up. Yeah. Then, you know? <laughs> um, but if I do have the space, I will take in a large dog, of course. Okay. Now, where do your dogs come from? Do people call you and say, hey, vet, we found a dog, or hey, I'm I'm surrendering my dog, or do shelters call you? Where do you get your animals from? Um, so at the beginning, it was just kind of networking and working with local rescues. Um, as you get in it, you get to start to know people, you know, um, your network expands. Um, mm. so I do work with the city. I do work with the county, you know, we've got to know each other. Um, so when we kind of need help or find a dog, we kind of reach out, see if they can help out. Um, or if they find dogs, because our, our shelter is just so jam packed right now. So there's a text, you know, and they, they kind of network the dogs and see who can take. Um, but my number's kind of gone around, um, you know, through animal control gives it out, um, you know, through networking. When I work with people, they tend to give your number out. Um, so a lot of times okay. I won't answer calls unless you leave a message because <laughs> it can be overwhelming. You know, there's people I that bet. actually think they can say, hey, can you come pick up that dog? And we're like, yeah, we'll be right there. You know, it doesn't work. Like um, but that, huh? I always try to help, you know, if they call and I can network post, you know, do the best you can all the time. If somebody watching this wanted to start a shelter or wanted to help out in any way, is there any restrictions or anything that keeps somebody from becoming a rescue um, yeah, if you're married, it <laughs> takes up all your yeah, time. Yeah, ask your um, spouse. Yeah, that's a good one. Ask your spouse to be allowed to open it. No, it's, you know, honestly, it's uh, it's nonprofit. We all know it. It comes from you inside financially. Um, 501C is definitely um, the way to go, especially if you're going to collect money or putting out for adoption. It's just a legal way and uh, kind of like a business. You know, it, you keep it separate away and, and that way, People, you know, don't accuse you. Unfortunately, even when you're trying to do good, you're always going to have people out there to blame or pinpoint something out. So you always want to make sure you're following the right process. That's so definitely true. a 501C. Um, patience, you got to make sure that you have the time. Um, you have dogs that haven't gone adopted for years. I have one that I've had for about three years. Um, you know, because some don't like, you know, he's food picky. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like eating with other dogs. He'll start a fight. And, you know, so you have to feed them separately. And, he has all these requirements and a lot of times people don't want a required dog. They want the perfect dog. They want the dog that's trained. They want the dog that is already housebroken, that gets along with everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes they get looked over or they get left behind because, you know, they have, not, I wouldn't even say problems, just, you know, it's They're like different. people, you know, yeah. it's, I, everybody has different personalities. There's people that are people person and then there's people that art people person. yeah so it's exactly the same with dogs you know yeah. like sometimes they like other dogs and maybe they don't like other dogs it's, it's and it's it fine you know it it's yeah. yeah and you know he's really brought a lot of joy um mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like they're not a, uh, adopted because they belong to you because he makes me take them walking and yeah. you know he gets me out there and um so sometimes it's a blessing to have them but patience and a lot of work and dedication you know um, like anything else when you get in volunteering is it takes a lot of your time it takes weekends it oh, takes networking it takes having a big heart to say no sometimes and just trying your hardest to work through it now Yvette do you have volunteers that work with you with the dogs or is it just you and your family um uh, well <laughs> in my house my kids are a blessing um 
they definitely help out a lot. They go with me to give shots. Um, they go with me to trap dogs, pick up dogs. Um, so they help out a lot. But <clears throat> we always say it is a village, um, you know, to make takes a village to make a difference. And it really does because we work together. If someone mm-hmm. can't hold the dog and they know they can or they reach out, right. um, you know, it's it's really you really couldn't do it alone either. That's the thing. You can say I'm gonna open up a rescue and to re- and you know rescue all these dogs, but you cannot do it alone. You really need to work with others. Um, and not many people see eye to eye. Um, but I think we forget sometimes the purpose is the dogs, not the people or what they think. It's is the dog going to a right home? You mm-hmm. know, is it being treated correctly? Yeah. Um, so definitely patience and working with others and loving animals and just dedication. Oh, yeah, I, I bet dedication and some money, because I'm sure it's not free or cheap to take care of a whole bunch of dogs at some point. Yes, um, we do get a lot of times rescuers and rescues do get blamed by people saying, oh, you want the dog for money and you make money off of them. And mm-hmm. we're like, well, where is this money coming from? You know, <laughs> right. I thought there was going to be a check coming in. Like, where is it? Where did I miss <laughs> out? Where did I sign? You know, because right. a lot of people think like, well, you just want it for the money or don't you do this? And it's. It's kind of mm-hmm. like, well, nobody gives us this. Nobody just knocks on our door and is like, here's a check or here's shots or, you know, it yeah. it, it really comes from inside and you have to be willing to kind of give really your own money that. to get them fixed. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, we do work with our partners in what is, which is um, a big help because you can get your dogs fixed, you know. Um, it's just so hard. We're just so overwhelmed sometimes here in the city. So, you know, what is helps out a lot as well. And we so do have sad. dogs in what is too. So. You yeah, really? Yes, so you're an international rescue. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there's amazing people. It's it's really networking and so many amazing people that cross over. We really work together to, to try to make a difference. That is so nice. Now, I've seen on your Facebook pages sometimes, you guys rehome dogs and some of them you drive out of state to take them to their yes. new homes. How does that work? Um, so networking, like I said, eventually you start meeting people, um, you start meeting people outside of the city. Yeah. Um, we had such a problem, um, you know, animal control stopped intaking. Um, mm. that, so what that means is if you call animal control and say, have a, you know, there's a stray, mm. they don't have no room to put them. So they're not picking up dogs because where do they put them, you know? Um, so a lot of times they can't pick them up and they wander the street. And, um, since it's so overcrowded, there's no adoptions. We've kind of reached out to other rescues um, out of town. And believe it or not, sometimes, you know, they're needed of dogs. Um, I don't know if maybe because we're a border city, there's not a lot of um, programs to help spay and neuter. Mm -hmm. So it causes overpopulation. And there's other cities like Santa Fe, San Antonio, Colorado, um, that really have programs. And so you really don't see strays and you know they're not overpopulated a lot well I can't say over everybody's always overpopulated but sometimes they have room um mm-hmm. so sometimes we send them up north um we even send them <sighs> to Ohio it we and and it really is about the people working together because people follow me <clears throat> on a page um they follow other rescues so sometimes if we need to transport to Phoenix and you can't do it you know I'll post it and a rescue will share or a rescue will post and I share and you know, people that follow you will say, hey, I'm going to Phoenix or, hey, you know what, I'll drive to Phoenix and take this dog. Um, so it, we really do work with the public and the public is our really our support because when we spent all our money and all our resources and yeah. a dog comes along, we ask the public for help. Like, hey, who wants to sponsor a neuter or someone needs food and people really come through. So it's really a teamwork. Um, you know, you might not be able to take in a dog and foster. You might not be able to transport, but some people can donate. Some people can donate a bag of food, which could go a long way. Very long way. Oh my gosh. Yvette, there's so much involved in this that I was not even aware of because I'm, I'm part of the public. I see these dogs running around and you know, I'm like, oh, somebody's baby got out. That's my first thought. But that's not always the case because we've all been driving down the road and see that somebody pulls over, drops a dog, yes. and tears out. Oh my gosh, that is so heartbreaking. So we're so glad that there are folks like you out there who are out here rescuing these dogs and trying to find them super great homes. So Yvette, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, whether to volunteer, to donate, or to surrender an animal, how would they reach out to you? Um, I do have a Facebook page that's Yvette Acosta, um, Mm -hmm. Y-V-E-T-T-E-A-C-O-S-T-A. 
Um, my profile picture is dogs. Um, you can always reach me from on there or follow if you need a, you know, inter someone's interested in adopting or just need help. You know, if someone needs help vaccinating, someone needs help spaying, neutering, they can always reach out um, to me. And we usually work together to try to help people out. Um, okay. Or you can email me for um, love for pups, which is L-U-V number four, P-U-P-Z at yahoo.com. Awesome. All right. Don't worry, y'all. If you didn't get all that information, everything, all of our contact information will be in the description below. And remember, volunteering and donating is still appreciated. And while you're here, don't forget, subscribe, like, and share our content as well. Yvette, my friend, before I let you go, we're going to play a game. <laughs> I know. Okay. This game is called This or That. Pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of a couple of things, and you just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? Sure. Let's do this. Android or iPhone? iPhone whatever read the book or see the movie ah <laughs> uh, see the movie yeah i knew I that about so you. better <laughs> <laughs> wallflower or life of the party ah uh, life of the party yes get off the tables yvette i understand yes <laughs> uh, prince or michael jackson oh i have to say michael mm, okay i'm not mad oh. about it so eat to live or live to eat Uh, live to eat. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Do it yourself or hire a professional? Ooh, depends what it is. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to do it myself, though. Um, I always try it. So I would okay. say do it yourself. All right. Um, reality TV. Yes, please. Or I just can't. Uh, yes, please. That's like my secret. <sighs> what is it? Your, your, your guilty pleasure? Yes, there you yeah. go. Your guilty pleasure. I love it. Don't tell anybody shows. then. It's just us. <laughs> Super Bowl, the game or the commercials? The game. Yeah. Depend who's your team, Eva? Cowboys. You know, we're from Texas. I have this argument all the time. You're Texas. You got to get a Texas team. Get your life together, bro. <laughs> and finally, my friend. What would you tell your 13-year-old self right now? Um, what would I tell my 13-year-old self? Um, keep following your heart. <laughs> mm, you sound like you're not sure. What were you doing when you were 13? Um, I plead the fifth. Is this, where am I? <laughs> yeah, I <do. laughs> Your mom's not listening. That's okay. No worries. <laughs> so follow your heart. I love it. Yvette, thanks yeah. so much for joining me today. I appreciate it, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. All right, everybody. That's it for this time. But don't worry. We'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday Presents. <laughs>